the sewing machine needs basic stitches, straight stitch, zigzag, buttonhole and running stitch. They're all shown in the glossary. We're showing the twin needle here. It's a double needle on the same shaft. It gives you two rows of straight stitch on the right side of your fabric, which can be at various lengths. And on the underneath of your fabric is a zigzag type stitch which means for woven fabrics it's neatening at the same time as top stitching. From underneath on the wrong side you need to trim away the excess fabric. This is great for woven fabrics and can be just as tidy for knit fabrics. The needles you'll need are sharp needles for woven fabrics. This is a Benina variety with a silver shaft at the top. This is a ballpoint fabric for knit fabrics with a copper coloured shaft at the top. And here are some twin needles coming in both ballpoint and sharp. Right, basic tools you need. Dressmaker scissors, cutting through fabric, ones for threads. Pins and needles, great to have a magnetic base for your pins tape measure and I have a little turning tool come little hem ruler. Threads I always use polyester and a seam ripper for opening buttonholes and fixing errors. Okay drafting patterns uh, you find out what module you're doing find out what pieces you require for example we've looked at the kimono here We've found the front and we're using violin to draw a pattern from. You don't cut the master patterns, uh, you use them to draw from. The violin's a great piece of fabric, uh, you can see through it as you can tell. It's like paper, easy to draw on with a ballpoint pen, easy to write on, easy to cut and when you lay it on most fabrics it clings to it which means you know you don't have to pin it as much. And um, yeah, it's a great little piece and you just put your whole patterns together um, and they just are thin and they pack away really well. Um, as you're drawing out the pattern use a ruler for straight lines, uh, sketch when you're doing curves, uh, make sure that you um, do the corners first or the straight lines first, you'll get into a groove what way that you like to do it best and um, happily draw. Make sure you put the markings on, straight grain to show which way the pattern should be on the fabric. The lengthening line, this is where you're going to uh, lengthen or shorten a garment depending on your child's height. Write the name of the garment, what pattern piece it is and put the size that you've just drawn. Make sure you put in the notches on the armhole. As you can see, I'm putting in the notches and that's a front pattern piece, so it'll be a single triangle marking. Write up all the writing. Make sure it's all there, and that way you can use it again later. going to show you on this kimono front how to lengthen so just as an example um, your child's one and a half centimeters taller than the average size that this particular pattern size is so you can do it two ways uh, the first way you just kind of like you measure the one and a half centimeters down from the um, lengthening line or from your seam because it's quite a straight piece and you just draw it in and you know that way you've just dropped it when it's a very shaped piece you certainly need to use the lengthening line so in this one I've just dropped it by one and a half centimeters next thing we're going to do is the kimono wrap sleeve we identify which pattern piece it is on the master pattern um, and you can put your weighted pins down on it to make sure you keep going back to it. It's terrible if you go back to the wrong pattern piece and you draw it up and a bit of a waste of time. Lay out your violin. Try and use your violin as efficiently as possible. 
you know, sneak your pieces in as close as you can. Pop a weight down to keep your violin down. You may have the door open and it's a windy day. It could just blow away. Again, draw around your pattern pieces. And you can be quite quick about this. Um, with the curved arms and necks, just sketch them slowly. You want to get them as close to what the pattern is as possible. Um, so that you get the correct styling shape that was designed. On the sleeve you'll have most of the time a shoulder notch which is where the sleeve will join the body of a t-shirt or kimono in this case and you'll have a front notch which is a single notch and a back which is two notches. Remember to put in your straight grain, remember to put in your lengthening and shortening line Remember to label your pattern piece, especially with the size. And if you're, if you're very organised, you can actually put in the date. So today's the um, 9th of May 2011, and this is when I made a three-month-old kimono for my daughter. On to the back piece. Same again. Lay our violin down. Anything that's on a fold is great because it's a nice straight line. So the sleeve is a single, that means you have to get two of those. And the front is also a single and you have to get two of those. Whereas the back is on a fold, you're going to fold your fabric when you um, go to cut the fabric out. Again sketch around your curved areas, make sure you put in all the markings, the waist, the hips, the front, the back, centre front, some of the patterns have a little notch, half a triangle, on the centre back or centre front. And this one for the lengthening line, what you do is you actually mark one and a half centimetres down, lift up your fabric, your violin piece to those markings and adjust your pattern as you go and it's for things that have got quite a curve to them uh, you might be dropping it by four centimeters and you want to keep that curve at the waist uh, you don't want to drop the curve down to the hip that would look a bit silly and you're just trying to keep it all in one piece so once you've cut once you've sorry once you've actually drawn everything out cut it out check everything's labeled Cut it out as close to your biro lines as possible. So here we are dropping it down. The lengthening line. Moving the paper up you can see the writing that I've written. And then we redo the bottom shape. And if you ever do a lengthening like that, that there's quite a difference between one um, part to another, like maybe a centimetre, just do a lovely gentle curve to get it to match up. And Violin's got a wonderful um, ability to be able to just, you know, put your scissors on it and just zoom them ahead without even chopping, kind of like a razor cut, I guess because it is papery. So we're going to cut the pieces out as neatly as possible, as close to the lines as possible. Very hard for you to see, but I'm um, being as close to the line as possible. And once you've cut out all the pieces, you'll be able to put them together once you've cut out your fabric. You might not be cutting your fabric out first of all and you put the pieces together and you might decide envelopes to begin with. I've actually ended up putting all of my pattern pieces into those wonderful clear folders. Um, I've got four folders here that's every pattern from the book. It's just chock-a-block and I put them in per sizing. Here I've got the a we drawing of the t-shirt. And here's our pattern pieces all cut out. Okay about the fabric. Running down the length of your fabric is the straight grain, on the edge of the length is the salvage, across that is the across grain and on a 45 degree angle is the bias. Now the stretch factor can be found by going across the grain pinning a 10 centimetre, 0 to 10 centimetre mark and then you stretch the fabric holding on one zero end 
and see how far it goes to. Now that only goes up to about 13, so that's a medium stretch. A looser stretch, this went up to 17, very stretchy for track pants or a sweatshirt. And a tighter stretch went only up to about 11. Okay, cutting the fabric out, you lay it down with the right side on the table, wrong side facing up. Uh, the salvage at the edge of the table so you get that straight line. When you fold it over you want to be even and you can check that. Um, with this particular material you had patterns otherwise you can use a tape measure to make sure the measurements even. Now that we're on a fold we can lay a fabric piece that has cut on the fold on that fold. At the same time we can put a sleeve down on this doubled fabric so the sleeve is on the double fabric with the outside being the right side, same with the kimono. We can lay the uh, summer dress pattern down on a 45 degree angle on that bias angle to be able to get a lovely drape from the fabric. Uh, 